there, thank you for the lovely lovely five, actually probably more like six, of just being an amazing person in my life lol. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you, my darling? I hope if you're good. Oh, look, you're the new stream boss. Yay! <laughs> so, slightly different today. I decided I wanted to revisit the Dragon, Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, or the Dragon Age world with Inquisition. I can't start with Origins because Steam will not have it anymore and will not let me play it. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of Dragon Age 2, so I thought, why not just jump straight into Dragon Age? Three, which is Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, a lot of you will probably be thinking, what the heck, I don't know anything about this. And I'm not playing the standard world either. I'm playing a custom world. So, I hope this works. I haven't done this before. Please let me know if there's any issues with the sound or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to now play you my Dragon Age world from the keep. So, this should work. If you believe the stories, mankind's pride gave rise to the Darkspawn. Countless in number and toxic to all life, Darkspawn search endlessly for an archdemon. When they find one, Darkspawn armies surge up from their corrupt barrows beneath the ground, and a blight begins. Grey Wardens are the only warriors capable of destroying an archdemon, and history always honors the one who sacrifices all to kill the beast. In the fifth blight, the Warden was the hero of Ferelden. A dwarven royal, second child of King Endrin I. Dukin. Framed for a murder and ultimately cast out, the young noble met Duncan, a Grey Warden, who saw the dwarf's potential as a Warden recruit. The allied Ferelden and Grey Warden forces met in Ostagar, where King Caelan's armies and a host of Wardens gathered, ready to destroy the Darkspawn. But Valor turned to despair as Loghain betrayed his king. Kaelin's forces were slaughtered, and the South was lost. The hero, now a full-fledged Grey Warden, survived with the aid of Flemeth, the mysterious Witch of the Wilds. Joined by Flemeth's daughter, Morrigan, and a Grey Warden named Alistair, the hero set out to build an army strong enough to abolish the Blight. With the traitorous Loghain now seated on Ferelden's throne, the Warden sought help from the influential Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. However, they arrived in Redcliffe to find the town under siege, as each night, undead rose in waves and assailed the battered village. With the hero's help, the people of Redcliffe stood fast against the undead horde. The Wardens reached Arl Eamon's castle only to find the Arl lying at the edge of death, and his court fallen into madness. To save his father's life, Eamon's young son, Connor, had made a deal with the demon, and quickly fallen victim to its possession. The hero intervened, freeing Connor from possession, and breaking the demon's hold over Redcliffe. But 
deals with demons are never straightforward. The demon agreed only to save Eamon's life, not restore him to health. Arl Eamon needed a miracle to recover. The hero located an urn containing the sacred ashes of Andraste, <laughs> which were said to cure any ailment. The urn was protected by ancient traps, <laughs> tests of will, and a dragon-worshipping cult that wanted to twist the urn's power to its own ends. The urn remained pure, but mysteriously disappeared after the wardens departed. Only the temple dedicated to it still stands. With a pinch of the ashes, the hero restored the Arl to health. Informed of Loghain's treachery, Eamon swore his political and military support. The circles of Magi are bound by oath to aid the Grey Wardens in times of blight. However, Lake Kamenad's tower could offer little help. One of its mages, Uldred, had become possessed by a pride demon and was twisting other circle mages into abominations. The hero fought to the top of the tower and defeated Uldred, saving the remaining mages. Grateful for their lives, the mages joined the Warden's army. The allies gained at the Circle were not the only soldiers to join the Warden's forces, however. Dalish elves don't usually make alliances, but even deep hatred can be set aside in the face of oblivion. An ancient curse was destroying Ferelden's largest Dalish clans, turning the elves into werewolves. Zathrian, the clan's keeper, claimed that the cure required the heart of the great wolf, Witherfang. Years before, Zathrain himself had afflicted a group of humans with the curse that now ravaged his clan. As long as he lived, the curse endured. The hero freed the werewolves from the long-standing curse, and the Dalis joined the Warden's forces. Blights may happen hundreds of years apart, but the dwarves who live below the surface of Thetis fight Darkspawn every day. No one is better schooled in battling Darkspawn than the warriors of Orzammar. Except perhaps their allies of old, the Grey Wardens. The hero arrived in Orzammar in the wake of King Endrin's death to find political factions fighting for control of the dwarven capital. Only the vote of a venerated paragon could break the deadlock to elect a ruler and order the dwarves to honor their Grey Warden treaty and join the battle against the new blight. The hero set off to find a paragon named Branca, who had disappeared into the deep roads in search of a legendary artifact, the Anvil of the Void, created by the renowned smith Caradon to forge mighty war golems. With Branca's help, the hero restored the Anvil of the Void and a small army of powerful golems joined the Warden's forces. The hero emerged from the deep roads with a master forged crown to bestow the Paragon's favor upon whichever rival candidate would be crowned king. Balin, the youngest son of King Andrin, who was suspected of foul play, or Haramont, the aging traditionalist backed by the Dwarven Assembly. Lord Haramont claimed the crown of Orzammar. His traditionalist values keep dwarves first in all things, and safely as far underground as possible. With Dwarden's strength now bolstering the Warden's army, the hero had to deal with Loghain so Ferelden could stand unified against the Dark Spawn before the Blight swallowed the world. The kingdom of Ferelden stood divided. While some nobles supported Loghain's regency, Others condemned his inaction against the Darkspawn. Civil war brewed, and Arl Eamon called a landsmate in hopes of curtailing the conflict and removing Loghain from the throne. Loghain was found guilty of treason, and the hero carried out his execution in Denerim's palace. As the Warden's united army massed in Redcliffe, the Darkspawn overran Denerim, laying siege to Ferelden's capital city. The hero's army fought valiantly through Denerim and broke the Darkspawn siege. On Fort Dracon's highest tower, the hero's strongest allies fought alongside the Warden in a final heroic battle against the massive Archdemon. The hero of Ferelden paid the ultimate price. The life
life of a Grey Warden given to kill the Archdemon and end the Blight. With no Archdemon to lead them, the Darkspawn scattered. Most fled underground, still teeming in number and always seeking a new Archdemon to awaken. The shattered kingdom of Ferelden embarked on a long journey to recovery. In the Blight's aftermath, strong leadership was crucial. Alistair, King Caelan's half-brother, and Queen Honora, Caelan's widow and daughter of Loghain, joined in the political union. Together, they ushered Ferelden into a new era. Ferelden still stands, as obstinate and resolute as the Dog Lords ever are, but the events of the Fifth Blight loom over it as the nation rebuilds. For people across Thetis, legends of the hero of Ferelden remain the nation's brightest beacons of hope during its darkest times. It all began in Kirkwall, the fall of Knight Commander Meredith, the Kunari Uprising, and of course, the Chantry's destruction and the onset of Mage Rebellion. One person always stood amidst the swirling chaos, Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. The Hawk family fled Lothering, refugees from the Blight. Leandra, mother of the champion and siblings Bethany and Carver, hoped to find refuge at her family's estate in Kirkwall, far to the north. While Hawk had no magical abilities, the champion was at the heart of events that ultimately led to the Mage Rebellion. The Hawks escaped the Blight with the help of Aveline Valen, a warrior and family friend. It's said that the family was also aided by Flemeth, the notorious Witch of the Wilds. Hawk's brother, Carver, never reached the Free Marches. He was killed by Darkspawn while protecting his family. The family's first years in Kirkwall were difficult. Leandra's brother, Gamlin, had lost the family fortune. The Hawks lived in poverty, forced to indenture themselves in return for entrance to the city. To pay off the debt, Hawk was forced to work for a gang of smugglers. All the while, Hawk and Bethany did their best to hide Bethany's magic from the Templars. Opportunity eventually struck in the form of a dwarf named Bartran Tethras, who was planning an expedition to the Deep Roads. It was a long shot, but with gold gained from the expedition, Hawk could free the family from its criminal creditors and further Templar scrutiny. Hawk met a rogue Grey Warden named Anders, who possessed detailed maps of the Deep Roads. These maps were crucial to the expedition's success. Once Hawk obtained them, everything else fell quickly into place. Bethany joined Hawk on the expedition. The siblings found ancient dwarven treasure and a statuette formed from a strange red lyrium. Tragically, Bethany fell victim to the blight that suffuses the Deep Roads and died in her siblings' arms. The gold Hawk recovered from the Deep Roads brought back Leandra's stately childhood home in Hightown. The Hawks had barely settled into their new home when Leandra was murdered, a deeply sinister and twisted killing. Hawk hunted down Quentin, the blood mage responsible, but could not prevent Leandra's death. Leandra's tragic death was part of a critical problem facing Kirkwall. Rising tension between the city's mages, who felt increasingly oppressed, and Templars, who grew increasingly suspicious of their activities. Adding to the strain, a large contingent of Kunari had also established themselves in Kirkwall, much to the growing discomfort of the city's rulers. After their dreadnought was shipwrecked many years before, a group of stranded Kunari were allowed to remain in a cordoned-off area in Lowtown. As time passed, the Kunari made no effort to return home, and offered no explanation about why they remained. Tensions rose to a breaking point. Revered Mother Patrice convinced the Kunari were a threat to the Chantry's faith, incited violence between the Kunari and the Kirkwall populace. Hawk knew that Patrice would bring about unnecessary conflict. Though the champion tried to stop her, Patrice orchestrated the murder of Seamus Dumar, a Viscount's son and a recent convert to the Cune. When her crime was discovered, the Quinari assassin killed her. At 
After Seamus was murdered, the Arashak of the Kronari group lost patience with the humans of Kirkwall. They would now submit to the Kuhn or die. The Kronari struck hard and fast. They took the palace in Hightown and beheaded the Viscount to immediately quash any resistance. Aided by Knight Commander Meredith and First Enchanter Orsino, Hawk reached the palace and stood toe to toe with the fearsome Kronari leader. Hawk fought the Kronari leader. The fierce battle resulted in the Arashok's death and the liberation of Kirkwall from its brief occupation. The Kronari quickly withdrew from the city entirely. Hawk saved Kirkwall and earned the grudging respect of the city's Templars, mages, and nobility, along with the title that history remembers, the Champion of Kirkwall. Kirkwall's problems were still not over, however. After Viscount Dumar's death, Knight Commander Meredith took power and blocked all attempts to appoint a new Viscount. Under Meredith's command, the Templars tightened their grip on the mages, planning to suppress what Meredith saw as a growing rebellion. Anders, who spent years fighting for justice and freedom for his fellow mages, saw that the time for negotiation was past. He destroyed Kirkwall's chantry, killing hundreds including Grand Cleric Elfina. This single act began a rebellion that spread from circle to circle until all circles of Magi had risen up in defiance against Chantry rule. Though Anders had done the unforgivable, something stayed the champion's hand. Anders survived the day, although many others did not. Fighting spread swiftly through the city. Some mages rebelled openly, many of them succumbing to possession. Templars turned their swords on mages who rebelled and on those who did not. As First Enchanter Orsino refused to bend to the Templars, Knight Commander Meredith demanded that every mage in Kirkwall be put to the sword. Hawk saved many mages from Templar blades, keeping them from succumbing to possession or the temptations of blood magic. In the end, however, Hawk was forced to strike down Orsino, who had betrayed his own values by resorting to blood magic himself. The battle proved one thing. Knight Commander Meredith had gone mad. Hawk saw the truth of it when Meredith unsheathed her sword, and the red lyrium idol from the deep roads was embedded within it. The blade fueled her hatred and paranoia, as it had for months. After a horrific battle, the red lyrium of the Knight Commander's sword consumed her as she died. Meredith became a statue, her face a frozen mask of horror. Little is known of the champion since that final battle. However, Hawk's story lives on in legend and song. Memories of the indelible changes the champion of Kirkwall brought to the face of Thetis. The Mage Rebellion in Kirkwall was felt throughout Thetis news spreading like wildfire. The Templars clamped down in response, but each new restriction only made things worse. Led by Grand Enchanter Fiona, the mages voted for independence. The Circle of Magi would govern itself without the Chantry and especially without the Templars. The result was cataclysmic. Two circles were destroyed. Those within killed to the last mage before the rest fled into the wilderness. Perhaps the mighty empire of Orlais could have intervened in the war before it began, but that was not to be. Grand Duke Gaspar began a deadly civil war against Empress Selene, vying for the Orlesian throne. The mages were offered safe haven in neighboring Ferelden, but the Templars followed, and so their battles spread across all of Thales. As head of the Chantry, Divine Justinia ordered the Templars to stand down. They refused, declaring their own independence. Thus, the war began in earnest. Templars hunting mages, mages fighting Templars. Their clashes wreaked untold destruction. Their own sense of order was falling to pieces. Divine Justinia made one final desperate bid to end. She approached the leaders of both sides and convinced them to come to a conclave held on neutral ground. With the Chantry to mediate, mages and Templars will talk for the first time since this all began. It 
is our last and perhaps our only chance for peace. So, relatively long, but a nice detailed description of what the heck is going on in Thalus right now. So, I am just going to close this screen quickly. There we go. And we are actually coming right in on the moment where it was, wasn't it? Um, where the last scene. So, that is Haven. That is where we're going to go. Um, we're going to go to the temple they were talking about. And we're going to hammer out the mages versus the Templars peace conference. Or are we? I will let you guys help me create my Inquisitor as well. Um, because I have a very sort of, um, it is good, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the games are, are fantastic. They really, really are. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do that together. Um, I don't know how well you can hear, um, hear the game. Let me know if there's any sound issues with the game. Um, because obviously this is a slightly different setup to what I did before. And I've got a new layout. So uh, let me know how that's going as well. Um, I've just realised there was one thing I forgot to do, so I'll be back in like 15 seconds. One sec. There we go. Hubs keeps um, unplugging my PlayStation to plug in the TV. Um, you like the new layout? Yay! I wanted to go with something a bit more simplistic. Yeah, it's much cleaner. Um, I didn't like all the stuff on there, but I wasn't sure about it and about taking it off. In the end, I just went, you know what? Let's just take it all off. Can you hear the sound all okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear the game? Yeah, I wanted a nice clean layout. I don't normally like, you know, webcam over the rest of it, but um, I think it's okay. It's not too big, so... Let's do this thing. I haven't played this game in about six years, <laughs> something like that. And I have got pretty much all the, um, the what's-its already. Okay, new game. Let's do this thing. So, I, the only thing that I'm going to insist upon is being a female. I don't like playing male characters unless I have no other choice. If I have a choice, I go female. But you guys can select and help me design my character. Yay! The game is a little quieter than you, but audible. Butter! How are you, my lovely? So, let me just... How's that? Can you hear the game a bit better now? All right, so shall I be a human? Oh, no, I'm not going to be a There we go. An elf. I'll read these out to you. Humans are the most numerous and powerful race in Thedas. They're also the most divided politically and seem to thirst for conflict. Human characters receive a bonus ability point at the start of the game. Elves are a historically oppressed people, distinguishable by their lithe frames and pointed ears. Though most survive in the poorest fringes of human cities, others live as nomads known as the Danish. Elves receive a bonus of 25% to ranged defence. Dwarf. I do normally play dwarf, but obviously you guys can pick. Dwarfs are short, stocky, and spend most of their entire lives underground. Those exiled to the surface are often merchants or smugglers. Because dwarves have no connection to the Fade, they cannot be mages but receive a 25% bonus to magic defence. So basically, they're, they're short, they're stout, they're stocky, they can't do any magic, but they've got natural resistance to magic. I know, I always go with Strong Dwarf Lady, um, and I think that's one of the reasons I didn't like Dragon Age 2 so much, because it forces you to play as a human. And I was like, no, I want to be a dwarf. <laughs> or the Cunari. The Cunari are a race of horned giants who follow a strict religious text known as the Cune. Those who have abandoned its principles are known as Tal Vashoth, and often work as mercenaries. Q 
Tsunari characters get a bonus 10% physical damage resistance. Big strong, yeah. But they are also good mages. So you can, uh, the Kunari in the game, the player character Kunari doesn't follow the Kune. They are a Talvashoff. Um, or you can be a dwarf, and you can give your dwarf females beards. Big thumbs up. You can be an elf, which are very, very different from your Tolkien-esque elves. Or you can be a human. I'm going to let you guys pick. As I say, the only thing I'm going to insist upon is being a female. I know, right? Beard ladies. I can't help myself. I, I have to do it. Now, it is interesting in that there are actually race and sometimes gender gating on in-game romances. So, for example, if I play a human elf or a, uh, sorry, a human elf, a human or an elf, I could romance um, colour, for example. But if I'm a dwarf or a punari, I can't. If I am an elf female and only an elf female, I could romance Solus. Um, there are, um, there's a couple of characters, Sarah will only date women, she, she is a lesbian all the way. Um, Cassandra will only date men, um, but she doesn't care which, gender, uh, which uh, race you are. And um, someone like um, Iron Bull will date you regardless of gender or race. Um, which is funny because he's a massive beefy canary and I've had him date a female dwarf before and it just is hilarious seeing them stand together. Um, so yes, would you like me to be, and I can do a poll, um, but would you like me to be a human, an elf, a dwarf, or a cunari? Torn between beard or a big tall lady. I personally would be plumping for dwarf. But as I said, I'm not just going to just pick it myself. But I, I can't resist a beard lady. <laughs> beard dwarf. We're going beard dwarf. Okay, am I going to be a dual-wielding rogue? Rogues are fighters who rely on speed and agility rather than heavy armour, using skill and an advantageous position on the battlefield to deal incredible damage. They may get up close and personal with daggers or strike from a distance with arrows. There we go. Rogue Archer. Uh, blah, 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 exactly the same. Um, they, uh, yeah, that's exactly the same because they're rogues. Warrior, two-handed. Warriors are frontline combatants, able to withstand incredible punishment in heavy armour. They are proficient in the use of two-handed weapons like mauls and greatswords, but may combine a smaller weapon with a shield for added defence. Fluffy! How are you? Enjoying your Thanksgiving? Uh, I can find some ladies with beards on TikTok and I love that aesthetic. I know it's so good, isn't it? Or we could have warrior weapon and shield. Warriors are frontline combatants, able to withstand incredible punishment and heavy armour. Um, oh, that's the same thing. So yeah, warrior, weapon and shield, two-handed, rogue archer or rogue jewel. Now, I will let you know that my preferred one in this is rogue archer, but again, I'm happy... Um, I have also played this game on easy, normal, all the way through to Nightmare and completed it on Nightmare as well. Granted, that was about six years ago. I'm going to probably die very quickly as I get used to the controls again. Um, but I usually go with a rogue, so up to you. Um, you love the idea of a thick dwarven rogue? So do I. <laughs> we, we share a brain. <laughs> we share a brain with us. <laughs> So we're thinking thick dwarven rogue, do you want me to be an archer or do you want me to wield two, two uh, daggers? What are we thinking? I like both. All right, let's do a poll. So we're going, we're going rogue. So let's say poll, um, rogue, archer, or daggers. Archer, daggers.
All right, we'll do a minute poll, and you guys can pick. You did have a fun time with Double Dagger build on Skyrim. That's an entirely different game. It really is. And do you know what made me laugh is um, Skyrim um, only came out, I think, three years before Dragon Age. So it wasn't long, considering we just hit the 10-year for Skyrim and they've not given us The Elder Scrolls VI. And this came out in 2014 and they've not given us Dragon Age Four yet. Um, but Skyrim was a game called Skyrim about dragons. This game is a game called Dragon Age about a hole in the sky. <laughs> Which always make me laugh. <laughs> um, but yeah, get, get your vote in quickly before time runs out. Get your vote in quick. Looks like Archer is winning by a distance. Um, so let's see. I know it's hilarious, isn't it? It's like, hold on a sec. <laughs> this is a game about a hole in the sky. What? <laughs> and two, one, close. All right, so we're going pointy long instead of stabby short. All right, so let me just pop that in the Discord because I do like to keep track, or, or I do like to keep a copy of the polls um, so that people can see what we've done. Uh, da -da 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 -da, where's the polls? Oh, where have they gone? Down there, there they are. God, I haven't done a poll in a while. All right, so. We are going to go with an archer. Do you guys want to see me play it on casual, normal, hard, nightmare, and we're going to ignore custom because the trials won't make any sense to you and I have done most of them already anyway. I have completed it on nightmare, so I don't mind. Um, but do you want me to see it on casual, normal, hard, or nightmare? And I'll read the descriptions out. For players new to role-playing games or those interested in a purely narrative focus, combat will provide minimal challenge. For players interested in a balanced but challenging gameplay experience, this setting is recommended for most players. For seasoned players looking for a significant challenge in combat, enemies are punishing and battles require a clever mind for tactics, or for masochists and the truly mad, it doesn't get more challenging than this. That's a lie. If you play it on custom and you put on half of the trials, it's really hard. <laughs> going to go hard, yeah? So we're going to go season players looking for a significant challenge. I probably will die a lot at the beginning just as I get used to the, the controls again. But like I say, I've, I, I platinum this before the DLCs came out. So, you know, it's, that's not a problem at all. Let me say we're going to go on hard mode. One vote for hard. Let's go hard mode. Two votes for hard. Let's do this thing. So, let's summarise our character. The dwarves of Thadus are known for their once vast underground empire and guilds of merchants and warriors held in high esteem by the other races of Thadus. Not you. A cast-off surfacer, unwelcome among the dwarves or most humans, you have scraped by as part of a criminal fraternity known as the Carter, so basically a mafia. Smuggling magical ore known as Lyrium. As part of the ruthless Kadash crime family, you spent your life on the streets of various free marcher city-states until you were sent to the Chantry Conclave as a spy and everything changed. Yes, I do want to import that state. Thank you very much. So that's the, the thing that we watched earlier, because... If you've played, or you don't even have to have played the previous two, but if you want to play this game and you don't want to play with the default world state, which is basically the one they put in the books as the standard state, you can actually, because all the decisions you make have an effect in this game, you can actually um, affect, the, the, you know, if you've killed someone off and someone else hasn't, you're going to have a different world. So you can, you can go in and, and change those things. And here is where we'll get to do our character creation. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to play this again for ages. So. Face shape. What kind of shape should we go? Obviously, we don't need to go through, you know, and... and what kind of shape should we go with? Sort of small and buttony? Like that, maybe? Or a bit longer. 
that's quite a good base face actually the first one uh, be right back to put away my dishes I'm happy as long as there's a beard gotcha well I'm thinking one or three so that's one and that's three they're very similar one's a bit more cutesy one's a bit more hardened uh, but the others are a little bit a little bit pointy Why don't we just go with that for now um, until and skin tone let's see maybe that one I quite like that one for someone who doesn't really go underground so they wouldn't be too washed out they're um they're out in the sun quite a bit i think we'll go with that complexion oh no i don't want them looking really old and haggard mm. it makes them look much more orc like that just makes them look drunk Yeah, those other ones make them look drunk. Eye colour. What colour eyes should we give her? Oh, and this is completely vanilla as well, because um, it's on the PlayStation. Um, so it's completely vanilla. So that's the range. Should we give her dark eyes or should we give her really like piercing eyes? Well, I quite like that, actually. Understated, but bright. Hmm. Hair. Yeah. Let's go to the beginning and look through. Bold lady. Most of the hairs in this are rubbish, by the way, so... That's one of the things that people wanted to mod in immediately with new hairs. By the way, are good, but they're not very good at hair. Is that the long braided one? It is. I don't want any of the skull cap ones. Because they look weird. Well, that one's quite utilitarian, isn't it? It's just scraped back, out of the way. beard on oh yes it's stubble it's not a full beard unfortunately but even as men you can't have a full beard I don't think yeah I don't want anything goatee like I want a proper yeah and we'll do the hair next because I skip past that by mistake That's kind of creepy looking. It looks like she's um, shoved her face in a load of uh, icing sugar or something. Hmm. Can have a little ginger dwarf. That's more red. Deeper. Mm, doesn't go with the skin tone. That one does though. Everything you've heard You leave me no choice. Alright. So head and ears. Ear size. Big ears. Woo! <laughs> Tiny ears. something a little bit normal let's go with not too sticky out this about there welcome back <laughs> you good with that yeah air position Whee! where do you want them to be it's kind of 
creepy to look at, isn't it? That makes her look like a mouse. <laughs> I'm going to be the rest of the day, pretty much. I'm just going to be going, <laughs> Quality content. Content you can only find on the channel of Christmas. so far. Earlobe size. We're going to give her a big old lobes so we're going to tuck them in. And it's a bit of a weird option, I guess. She's looking flat. I know, right? Look at her. With her stubble. Big flappy lobes. Let's do it. Boom. <laughs> Drop them down. Actually, I think that's flappy without being too over the top. Yeah? She's a dwarf. She's not going to be, like, winning beauty contests. <laughs> She's not this willowy little elf. Check out her stubble. I just wish they could, I mean, considering they actually do let you have stubble on females, is great, but I just wish that they give you big, bushy beard. Um, cheekbones. How are we going? Oh, wrong one. How are we going to do our cheekbones? How pointy are we going to make her? Great big bushy beard. Yeah, I think that's okay. It looks realistic without being over the top. I was hoping for big bushy beard for any beard and ladies rearing games. Exactly. And that's one of the things that we've said to them. Apart from the fact that we want dwarf romances, damn it. Um, because your dwarf can be in a romance, but you can't romance any dwarves. Um, and there is a particular lady dwarf who you'll meet um, quite early on in the game who is a big fan favourite. And we were all like, why can't we date her? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of want to make her look tough, you know. She's not going to be a wilting flower. Um, I don't want to give her too Neanderthal a head. Obviously, if there's any decisions I'm making here that you're not pleased with, let me know. I think I'm going to have to do this one from the side, yeah. Do we give her a five head? <laughs> That's a bit much, isn't it? Let's give her a four and a half head. Okay. Nope. Nice. Oh, 2014 mechanics, damn it. Nice shape. Let me face her towards you so you can... Oh, we'll start at that end. So if there's any particular eye shape, four and a half for the win, absolutely. Uh, if you see any particular eye shape that you, you really like, let me know. Because we're going to change up her nose and her mouth in a minute. I quite like that one, actually. Big. Squinty. They look a little bit, um, a little bit wide in headlights, don't they, those ones? Like I say, I don't want to create a character that's supposed to be a Blim and Beauty Queen. There's too many of those out there. I want mine to look like a proper dwarf. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards these ones, you know. Yeah, these ones. By size. So that's big, big. BB. So let me go around about there. position. Oh, that's going to make her look like <laughs> neutral like. Really creepy. Right, you want to put them roughly in line with the uh, with the ears, don't you, so that they don't look. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. I 
of the years, that's most normal, yeah. Okay. Eyebrows. As you can probably see from that flick through, the eyebrows in this game are awful. And it's another thing that people mod out of the game immediately. This is vanilla, so we're going to have some awful eyebrows. No eyebrows. Plain eyebrows. Plucked eyebrows. Very plucked eyebrows. Bushy. And then we go all the way through to like crazy old man. You know, crazy old man lives out in the forest. I mean, what the fuck is even that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> who came up with that idea? <laughs> I mean, really, who uses those eyebrows? <laughs> Pretty much a unibrow. And then back to something relatively normal. I'm thinking thickish without being the really, like, what the fuck ones. Maybe those? Or are they a bit too plucked? Those? I mean, she spends a lot of her time out in the wilderness, so... Yeah, again, I don't want her to look like she's just stepped out off a magazine page. Like, you see a lot of people's where they've modded them to, you know, ridiculous beauty levels, and you're like, this girl sleeps out in the wilderness. What the fuck? <laughs> you know? Eyebrow position. Let's just put them, leave them at a normal. And then eyelash style. None. Tiny little ones. That'll do. Okay, so we can now actually pick. I know, right? Eyelashes on. Fleek. Um, we can actually pick the colour of her eyes. I just picked out the greeny ones at random. I actually thought they were grey, but now we zoomed in, I can see they're more green. Um, <clears throat> instead of colour you want, I mean, I could give her, you know, bright pink eyes if you really wanted. And actually, I did do that. I made a... It wasn't on this game. It was on Origins, which is the first one. I made a dwarf who... Um, she had darker skin... She had um, a pink tattoo, and the, the dwarves only have tattoos if they are either criminals or they're outcasts. She's a criminal and an outcast, this particular one. Um, but the first one, it's more they're forced into criminality because of the situation that's part of the game um, and you know, playing that particular origin, uh, hence the name of the game, um, that you, you go through and you find that out. Uh, always going to suggest purple. Purple! Well, it goes with my uh, with my theme, doesn't it? So let's um, how about that? Makes her look a little bit mysterious. And then why don't we do a slightly different tone on the inner? So make the inner a little bit darker. How's that? That makes her look like she could be somewhat mystical without being mystical, doesn't it? I also think it makes it really fun um, because the dwarves have no connection to the Fade. The Fade is basically like dreams. I'm not going to go too much into it because it will explain it during the game. Um, but basically that's where mages pull their magic from. So, we're given her purple eyes. Nose. Alright, so let's start at this end. Uh, we'll look from the side first and see what kind of nose... What does that look like? Oh, that's pretty... Actually, I quite like that one. It's nice and bulbous. I was about to say I wanted a bulbous nose. I'm thinking this one. She's a, she's a dwarf. And most of the dwarves on Vader's do have big bulbous noses. So if I were to give her, like, a really sleek, beautiful nose, she wouldn't look like the rest of the dwarves. Mm-hmm. Bulbous without looking silly, exactly. Okay, no size. Let's make it a smidge bigger. But you know what? It suits her. It suits her. She rocks that nose. Oh, ice cream. Ooh, what kind of ice cream? Oh, we just did that one. Nose position. I'm not going to change nose position. Nose bridge. I 
I'm not going to change the nose tip or the position, and I'm going to leave the nostrils as they are. And do I want to break her nose? I could give her a little broken ridge. No, nah, doesn't look so good. Doesn't look like she commands it quite so much when it's broken. Eggnog ice cream with the, ooh, <laughs> with the lactose pill on the side. Nice. Yeah, I want to look like she's rocking that nose. I don't want to look like it's she's something she's stuck with. Because I think she looks commanding with that mouth shape. Okay, let's start at the, the left and work our way across. So, which mouth shape do we want to give her? Do we want to give her a little, a little gap? Or do we want a closed lip? Because there's two options for open mouth. Or we could go with a closed lip. I'm thinking that one or that one. So the second one or the one just before the closed. I think that one. I think it works better with the nose. So welcome in. How are you, lovely? Welcome in. We're just designing our um, our new Inquisitor. Yeah, I think I like that one better because it, it goes with the nose better. She's got quite big features. Her eyes are a little bit smaller, but it doesn't look like it doesn't work. She's got big ears. She's got big eyebrows. She's got big nose, big lips, quite sculpted cheeks, but her eyes offset them quite nicely, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm pleased with that. We're not going to change the width or the position. We're not going to change the thickness. And you know what? I quite like her jawline. Do we want to give her an Adam's apple? Is the next question. Well, I think she's looking pretty cool. Uh, I think she's getting like a nice strong style. But exactly, exactly. You know, a dwarf is not going to be this delicate little thing. If you want to play a delicate little thing, play an elf. <laughs> you know? I like my dwarves to be rough. Rough and ready. I really like her. I don't think we need to tweak anything else. And so that's the animation that she's going to have when she talks. Yeah, I think I'm happy with her, you know. Scars and tattoos. All right. Scars. Let's see what we have. I like that one. I like that. That one's on a cheek. That looks like what I did to myself the other day. You can see it's, um, it's still a slight red line, but it's mostly gone now. Forehead. Down on the lips. Well, that one's just, uh, just near the eyes. That could be thin neck. I can't even see what that one is. That's like a Kylo Ren or a scar one. No, a scar from Lion King. That one's on her lip and on her eyebrow. I think that one's a bit big. She is an archer, so she's not going to be always in the, you know. If she was a, a, a knife wielder, I'd have her with loads of scars. Um, because she'd be up close. Whereas where she's an archer, I want it to be more like either she did it in training or she wasn't fast enough and someone got in close before she took them out. Um, yeah, smaller one, because these ones are the big, big ones. So something like this, if she was a, you know, an up-close fighter, I'd be like, yeah, fine, because, you know, that's basically all of them. <laughs> um, but I am thinking, I liked this one. Do you guys concur? Yeah, so, like little nicks. Uh, if it was a little nick, this this one is a good one, I think. So do we want to go a little nick, or do we want to go like a someone got too close and now she's toughened up because she knows not to let them pass their guard anymore? That kind of a feel. Because that one could be an arrow that's just... Yeah? All right, so we'll leave that one then. The intensity's good. I don't want to change the position. I'm happy with that. Now, tattoos. 
Tattoos, like I say, are a little bit weird. They actually have meaning in this game, uh, in this world. So there are different kinds of tattoos. There's the dwarven tattoos, which look like this. Okay. Um, and these basically brand her as a criminal, um, which she is, to be fair. Ah, okay, good. It's not allowing me to apply a Vaseline because Vaseline are not just blocky and they're sort of, um, well, not all of them, but they're um, tattoos that the Dalish elves will have because it harkens back to their history. But I'm not going to explain that because that actually, although you find that out in the first game, you find out more about it in this game and, and it will be a spoiler. Um, so are we thinking a tattoo and if we are, what are we going to do with it? I don't like that one. I mean, that one's kind of kind of nifty. It looks almost like um, <laughs> almost like a really funky eyeshadow, doesn't it? So this one you see a lot in the original game. This particular one. Branding as a criminal does a lot in game. Yep. Um, it doesn't do anything in game because um, I think it would add too much extra um, conversations to it. Um, but yeah, it's in the law it does, but in specifically in the game itself, it doesn't. Because when I first started playing, I played as a red-headed dwarf. Um, I actually played as a red-headed royal dwarf, and you get to pick your tattoos before you go into the game. So I slapped a, you know, a tattoo that looked a bit like this on her face. Um, and then I got into the game and it was like, oh, you know, those tattooed outcasts over there. And I'm like, great, my princess is running around with this. <laughs> um, this one, the t shade. Is that the one you meant? Yeah, I think, I think that's the closest to a t shade. Yeah? Alright, and then are we going to go purple to go with her eyes? Or do you want to go with a contrasting colour? Ooh, that's kind of cool actually. I kind of like the pale purple. The purpley pink, and it goes with my, um, <laughs> with my overlay. I'm liking that. You guys liking that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do this. So basically, if she were to walk into a human town, people would look at her and instantly know that she was, like, a dodgy person. And she is. She's part of a carter, which means she's basically mafia. And makeup. So let's see. Eyeshadow colour. We want that to be more purpley as well. Not quite that bright. Like that. I don't want to be any more intense. Um, eyelashes we're going to make black because they just look weird in the other colour. Um, eyeliner is going to be black. I'm going to make that a little bit more intense just because it underscores the... Um, yes, I know she's out in the wilderness and she's applying, but we're going to pretend that's part of a tattoo. Um, I don't like the blushes in this game at all, um, so I'm going to veto the, the blushes because they look awful. And lip colour. Should we give her a lip colour or should we leave her as is? And I'm actually going to turn down the lip shine. And the reason I'm going to do that is partly because who's going to have gloss out in the freaking wilderness, but also it sometimes go, looks a little bit weird in game if you have really shiny lips. Because um, you get this like translucent thing and it, it just looks really weird. Um, but do you want to give her lips, uh, lipstick, or do you just want to leave her as is? I think she looks cool as is. So. Yeah, I don't really like the shine either, but um, when we first started doing it, playing, when this game originally came out, everyone was like, oh, I made, made the lips shiny and it looks really weird in game. So, um, but I, I think, if you guys agree, that between us, we've made a really funky looking character there. I like that. I think that's good.
Now, what are we going to name her? Oh! Whoops! <laughs> She's named Malika. <laughs> the wrong button because I'm used to playing Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> so she is Malika Kadash. And Socks, are you going to behave yourself or are you going to be naughty again? Nah, that's the real question. Mm, I've got eye and eye on you. I would have. Sorry, I hit X when I was supposed to hit circle. Alright, so she's just seen that vision and she's just fallen out there. And here we go. <laughs> An hour into stream, we're going to start the actual game. <laughs> she is in all her glory in game model okay it's important as well the redhead woman with the one with the purple thing around her used to date the original dwarf i played and the original dwarf died so she's now looking at another red-headed dwarf at the moment which kind of adds another layer with stubborn she's a dwarf she's woken up in prison she's just been told everything's blown up everybody's dead she's the only one that survived our oh, game is still a little quiet okay you have a little fiddle fiddle okay she's going to remain silent let me know how, how it's going How's that? Is that a bit better? Alright, so you get options here. Oh good. You get options here so you can be like, be a bit crying. Oh no, all those people died. Let me go, damn it. Whoa, whoa, what now? Oh, I'm confused. So it'll give you a little bit. They won't necessarily say, it's Mike Mass Effect. They won't necessarily, same company. It won't necessarily say the exact same thing that's on there. Um, but we're going to go with someone who's totally out of her depth here. She's also used to being secretive and she doesn't like the fact that she's now got a Templar and some weird woman that she's never seen before standing over her and she's in chains. So she's going to be like, let me go. Let me the fuck go. Badass ladies. Right, let's get out of this dungeon. Not the 
tried to game out, I did get into it, I like Dragon's Dogma more. If you have your still like this, you'll like Dragon's I'll give it a go. Do I have a choice? Cassandra disapproves. I think my head covers whether they approve or not. Dragon Dogma looks so cursed. I think Dragon Dogma became piggybacked, played a lot. Ah! I don't really know much about it. I've heard of it, but I don't really know much about it. So done with the Smeagol Brook. <laughs> Love it. Did you play the first two games, um, Socks? Because a lot of people jumped on this one. This one is good, but I genuinely feel that had Origins, because Origins was made in 2006, had Origins had the Frostbite engine and had the, the newer technology when this was made in 2014, it would be a much better game. Um, it's, it's limited by when it was made, but it's, it's so good. You started with Inquisition. That probably makes a, a lot of difference. A lot of people that I know that started with Inquisition were a little bit like, what the hell is going on? Um, because there's so many things that you can do. Um, but yeah, so chat have helped me create this character. Um, it's going on the custom world, which um, I've linked in the Discord. Um, if anyone here isn't in the Discord, please feel free to join. Um, so I've linked my world state in the Discord if you are interested and you didn't see it at the beginning of the stream. Um, and they also have selected it to be played on hard mode. Um, so here we go. So I've just got to remember how the F I played this, because it's been a long time. Let me see, I can't remember off the top of my head. Can I put subtitles on? I think that might help. There we go. All right, let's see if that helps. Stay behind me. Stop that noise. Stay behind me. Alright, I've got to remember how to fight now. This is going to be fun.
Please trust me. If you're going to lead me through a demon infested valley, you'll have to trust me. Give me one reason to trust you. Because my life is on the line. Press L1 and select Heart Consumer Potion. Which I don't need to do right now. Loot. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme give give all the loots. Loot, 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 loot. Now, I do vaguely remember there's shit up here that I can grab to sell. So I'm going to do that quickly. Because we like loot and we like money. Ha ha, there it is. Uh -huh. Don't turn your back on me, Mr. Mr. Demon Guy. Bodies around here. There we go. Right, there's bodies. There's loot. Loot. Okay. I love the fact that I'm just leading the pace here. Because I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I trust you, but I'm going to let you lead the way. <laughs> Up on the hill. It's attacked from a distance. Oh, not wrong button. to um, change my target. I'm sure it will come back to me. Okay. Let's grab some stuff. Check everywhere. Look at everything. bodies. Demons, demons everywhere. That's right. To get one shot each. Is our Malika, the shield, die in your face. Okay, starting to take a bit of damage now. Come on, Cassandra. Do your thing. Do your tanky tank thing. Oh, 
Lord. So what you're thinking of the game so far and how's the stream going? I've, set, I've changed a few of the settings um, since Tuesday because we were having all sorts of um, bitrate issues on, on Tuesday. So I've gone in and fiddled with them and it does seem to be more stable, so that's good. do you? Well, well. You have a warm penny. I am happy to provide that love and attention. Look at the little bubble. The little bubble. The little warm beans. Little warm beans. Just like, Mum, I hate you. Put me back down. Put me back down. Hmm? For those of you who haven't seen yet, we now have Mumu and Ginger. Emotes. Bask in the glory of the cats. Uh, it's one pretty good, but the visuals get kind of pixelated during cutscenes and animations. Okay. Um, I know part of that is because I have really terrible internet. Um, I did a speed test um, before stream, and it's better than it was the other day, but it's still not great. So we are looking into maybe changing provider. I know that that won't necessarily increase speeds, um, but we're, we're going to see what we can do. Um, but yeah, I'll take that into account and I will keep fiddling. Um, unfortunately, I can't change those settings while I'm live, um, but I will keep looking into that and seeing what we can do. Um, but yeah, and those are the kitty kits. Oh. Anna! Thank you, thank you. Oh, I just realised that... Um, Moobot's thingy doesn't work. Thank you so much for the resubscribe. How are you? I tried to come into your Uno stream last night, but I don't think you saw me. I was up really late. <laughs> or really early, in the case, maybe. Um, let's have a quick look. Because that's got the wrong code on it. Um, do -do 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 -do. Oh, I can't find it right now. I'll do it later, but remind me. You did, you called out to you, but didn't respond. Oh, I didn't hear you then. Oh. Uh, let's see. Barak Tetris, rogue, storyteller, and occasional unwelcome tag along. You're with the tart drink, pleased to meet you. Nice crossbow, what now? <laughs> nice crossbow. What else am I going to say here? Come on, really. Let's not be rude, because he's just apparently saved our life, so thank you. Then I owe you my thanks. Thank me if we manage to close the breach without killing you in the process. Cassandra, you should know. The 
magic involved here is unlike any I have seen. Your prisoner is no mage. Indeed, I find it difficult to imagine any mage having such power. Understood. We must get to the forward camp quickly. Okay, of course I'm not a mage. I'm a dwarf! <laughs> Yes, December third. You, missus, need to get your butt on the game with me. Yeah. Yeah. Grabbing all the loots. Grabbing all the loots. Oh, look, she's forgiven me. She's right next to me now. I do remember this bit, it's going to flip to tactical mode in a second, and I'm going to flip right that out because I, I don't like this game's tactical mode. Um, I actually find it really annoying um, and confusing, and I'd rather just play in real time. So, there is that. Uh, Egypt, I'm going to sit at the menu because I can't force myself to do the same weapon grinding crap knowing it's so close. Aww. Well, I mean, we could work on uh, Jez and uh, Annelies too. Why don't we take out these guys? We are long range after all. Let them deal with the up closes. Boom. Down you go, bitch. But yeah, I mean, you know, I've obviously had annual leave this week and last week, so um, I've been playing quite a lot, but actually I've got my alt on light all the way up to Shadowbringers. Uh, I've got to do Don Meg, um, it's my next dungeon. So I've been having fun with that. Is there anything else worth grabbing in here? Okay, that will all come in very useful later. Bye bye house, it's about to burn down. So one of the reasons I'm grabbing as much L fruit as I can is because you actually use it in um, healing potions. I can only carry eight at a time. Still very, very useful. Down, big boy. Let's get your mates now. Out the way, tree. like they were killing this poor dude. Um Okay, I can't um, I can't equip that yet. Airy fluff. But yeah, I'm probably gonna be up late ish tonight. Oh ah wrong button.
trying to go from a game where um, jump is triangle to a game where jump is square <laughs> is going to take a bit of getting used to. But yeah, um, if you want to jump on and play with Jez at all, let me know because um, I know obviously we're not going to do a huge amount with them while Endwalkers, you know, we're getting through it, but um, at least it'll be something slightly different for you. With Ill, I'm currently working on... Um, I'm currently working my way on through the trusted thing. Hold on, we haven't much further. So, are you innocent? I don't remember what happened. That'll get you every time. Should have spun a story. That's what you would have done. It's more believable. bits and bobs that will uh, serve me well, so let's head up there. Do you want me to take you out? You, you sort out the, uh, the big scary one, I'll take out the little dude. So we are playing this on hard mode, which is why it's taking a little bit of time for these guys to go down. I'm pretty sure there's more elf fruit and stuff up there, but I can't bother searching. So that does damage to demons around it until it goes like this and you have to wait for it to uh, thingy again. But it's a good way of taking out groups. So, we're going to focus, obviously, on archery first. And I'm going to want long shot first, I think. You're not going to let me take it. I think I might already have that one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so death from above. Supply cash! Gimme, gimme, gimme! We need whatever's in here. Uh, inventory. Haha! -ha. Accessories. Yep, there we
Right, so re just a quick recap on what's going on with these two while they're having an argument. Um, when asked about the Chantry and, you know, sort of how they designed this religion, they basically said, they thought, well, what if Jesus had been a woman? How would that have affected things? So the most holy is basically the Pope, um, and it's a lady Pope. Um, and men can only rise as high as he does in the Chantry, excepting one group of heretics who it's, they've swapped it the other way around. Um, but they, they've mo mainly been wiped out in the previous game. So yeah, the women are in charge basically when it comes to anything clerical. Exactly, me too, me too, Sassy. How sexy am I going to be here? I know, right? Matriarchy. Um, what about the breach? I'm standing right here. So no one's in charge? I'm going to say so no one's in charge. Let's sass this up. So none of you are actually in charge here? You killed everyone who was in charge. Call a retreat, Seeker. Our position here is hopeless. We can stop this before it's too late. Hello. Can I say hi? Mm. He's wandering around in his hoodie. We must get to the temple. It's the quickest route, but not the safest. Our horses can charge as a distraction while we go through the mountains. We lost contact with an entire squad on that path. It's too risky. Listen, Ooh, popcorn. You're asking for my opinion? No, you're asking me what I think. You have the mark. And you are the one we must keep alive. Since we cannot agree on our own. Okay, so, up to you guys. Shall we just go charge? And potentially risk losing that whole squadron on the mountain path, but get to the temple much, much quicker? Or are we going to take the mountain path and potentially find that lost group, get there slower, but use the soldiers as a distraction and potentially lose some soldiers in the distraction. How do you want to do it? Are we going to go charge or are we going to go safe? I'll go slower, but then again, I know nothing of this game or world. Well, that's the fun thing. I've done both in previous playthroughs. You know, back in 2014 when it came out. <laughs> um, I also did an evil playthrough where I had someone who basically used their position to make themselves a lot of money. <laughs> Which was fun. <laughs> um, yeah. I usually go with morally grey characters, though. That's, uh, that's my usual aesthetic. Grumpy old women are morally grey uh, grey characters, and if you've got a morally grey grumpy old woman, perfect. Which is probably why I love Master Matoya from Final Fantasy XIV so much, <laughs> because she's a grumpy old bitch who does not care. Except for each dog. So, charge! Careful sustained assault. Soldiers will stand with you to ensure arrival. Scouts in the past. In the past, maybe not. Fast but indirect, soldiers will act as a distraction elsewhere. The problem will be addressed sooner, but there may be casualties. I personally am leaning towards the mountain path. And the reason I'm doing that is she's a Carter member. So she is very good at sneaking around in the shadows and shifting Miriam. For coin. So 
I'm thinking, she, and she's an archer, I'm thinking she'd be happier in the mountain part if we're going to go with her character build. Do you concur? So that just said Cassandra slightly disapproves and Barrack approves. Unfortunately, my head is in the way of the little things that pop up, which is why I don't, which is why I've avoided these big game screens before, because it always covers something. But I can always read it out to you. It's not a, not a big deal. Two dwarves, a human, and an elf. That sounds like it's a joke. <laughs> okay. Climb. Oh, I see. It's put long shot in two different places. I see, I see. I'll have to fiddle with that in a minute. That's a weird groan that the images make. I was starting to get to the bit that I don't remember so much. No, there's nothing in here. Okay. Let's keep going. So let me just go into my character record. Um, to battle menu. Ah, right. I see. Okay. I'll be able to fix that later on. Didn't mean to do that. Enjoy your luck. Uh, going to bed now. Aw, thank you for your luck. Lovely sleep, lovely. It was lovely to have you in here. I'm going to do a quick shout out. Anyone in here who doesn't follow Lim's wife, and go do it. She is great. Yeah, I did a thing. I did a thing. Oh, oh no. I just... Um, oh no. <laughs> you did the thing! <laughs> It is, it is. And do you know what? Someone actually liked, you remember the tweet that I made you do um, that was like, I will play Final Fantasy XIV with uh, Epistra Tease again. Someone liked it today. And I was like, that's a bit weird and late. But I was like, yes, I do need to get her playing it again. <laughs> but yes, go 
to bed. Rest up, my darling. Dad, he says so. <laughs> Big gloves. Big gloves for the limbs. You ready, guys? Let's do this. Bang. Oh, wrong button. making silly noises in her sleep. It's super adorable and also extremely loud, so apologies if you can hear it. I do like the fact that they do in this game a lot of the dialogue will change based on you know which race you are and which class you are because it makes it a little bit more realistic and Anna if you're still here I am thinking that um, maybe we can play a bit of 14 if you if you're up for it get you back in the zone before anyone is because you've got the Moogle Trove. Oh, here come the big demons. Isolation while we're moving. Thanks for making you finally arrive, Lady Cassandra. I don't think we could have held out much longer. Thank our prisoner, Lieutenant. He insisted we come this way. A prisoner? Then you. It's worth the risk. It'll be nice. It was worth saving you, if we could. Then you have my sincere gratitude. The way into the valley behind us is clear for the moment. Go. You still can. At once. Quickly, let's move. The path ahead appears to be clear of demons as well. Let's hurry before that changes. Okay. Down the ladder. <laughs> That's the way to the temple. Ooh, fire resistance helmet. That sounds useful. That's the exact same weapon, so there's no point changing weapons. Armor. Fire resistance cow. Level 6. Okay, we're level 2, so we can't have that at the moment. Hold on, can we start with that? Yep. Okay. Accessories, I believe, sorted. Yep. Don't need to craft materials yet. I mean, if not the rest. So, what I think I'm going to do now, as it is midnight, um, is I'm thinking of raiding out, um, and then when we come back and I play this again, I'm next scheduled to play this on Sunday. I'm doing a 12-hour stream on Sunday, because it's my birthday! Um, so we'll be doing a 12-hour stream to celebrate then, and I've got a couple of hours of Dragon Age Inquisition set in. However... I am going to be doing another bonus stream on Saturday, partly because, obviously I didn't do any last week, just 
it just happened that way because we've been off and Bubs and I have been extremely lazy um, and you know doing stuff um, occasionally so I didn't do any last week so I'm going to do an extra stream on Saturday I don't know how long it's going to be because obviously I am doing a 12 hour the next day but I'm, I may decide to play this then we, we will see I've been really excited to play this lately in fact for months I've been wanting to play this on stream and play it again um, and I just decided F it let's do it I've still got another couple of games I need to finish um, but you know what, sometimes you just got to go with your gut, and I felt like playing this, so that's what we do. Alright, so let me see who is on. Uh, let's see. Foxy's on. Let's go check out Foxy. So, um, we have the raid call, which is this. If you're a follower, you can use that. If you are a sub, you can use this one which has been updated to include the kitty cats, because of course we must include them with sweet, sweet kitty cats. Um, so let's do it. Let's go in and say hello to Foxy. She's playing Call of Duty Vanguard at the moment. And I will see you over there, my absolute darlings. And um, thank you, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I wasn't sure how the new game was gonna, was gonna take. So thank you so much for being here. I love you too. Love you all.